Was there ever a time that you didn't like to spell Christmas as Xmas? Or maybe until now you don't because you might think it crosses out Christ from the word. I actually found out that X is the Greek letter for Christ. In fact, the Roman Emperor Constantine saw this symbol in the sky before the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, and when he won, he ordered all persecution of Christians to cease. Here's another one, Happy Holidays. This one has also been another alternative greeting which is used because some secular people would get offended by Merry Christmas. But actually, the word holidays comes from the term holy days, which would be the 12 days between December 25 and January 6, where December 25 is the day that we remember Christ's birth, and January 6 that recognizes the visit of the wise men. I was mind blown by that. There's more to know about Christmas. Christmas traditions, like about the origins of Secret Santa, Santa himself, and I also have a Bible reflection at the end. So if you're up for that, then stay tuned! Hello friends and family! If you're new here, my name is Hannah of Hope and Future. Welcome, and if you've been here before, I'm glad to have you back. If at any point during the video you are blessed, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to join the h and friends and fam. Let's start with Saint Nicholas. He was a real person born in 280 AD in Lycia, Asia Minor, which is present-day Turkey. He was someone who loved God. He dedicated himself to much prayer, he became a bishop, and with whatever money he had, he used it to help others. The origin of secret giving started from this. There was one time when when Nicholas helped a man who went bankrupt. Creditors were threatening him that they would take his three beautiful daughters into slavery and the only hope the father had was to marry them off as fast as he could before the creditors could take them away. Sadly, he didn't have money for the girls' dowries, which were needed for them to marry. Nicholas heard about this and late one night, he threw a bag of gold in the family's window to save the eldest daughter from the fate of an outcast. It became the talk of the town and she soon got married. Then Nicholas did the same, rescuing the second daughter. Finally, when Nicholas threw the bag of gold in to save the third daughter, which supposedly landed in one of her stockings set out by the fireplace to dry, the father ran outside and caught him. He thanked him, but Nicholas, who wanted the glory to God alone, made the father swear that he wouldn't tell anyone. Well, looks like the father did tell, but it worked out for us, right? Now let's talk about the word itself, Christmas. In the year 354, Pope Liberius led a successful effort to end the worship of the Roman god Saturnalia. So that people would celebrate Jesus rather than this pagan day, Pope Liberius came up with Christmas, which is from Christ's Mass, meaning the celebration of the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. The next one is the Nativity scene. In 1223, when so much attention was on gift giving during the Christmas season, Saint Francis of Assisi became concerned and made an effort to bring back the true meaning of Christmas. He created the first creche or a nativity. Now how about the Christmas tree? Again, people say that it's pagan. According to this book that I'm reading, it says this. This traces back to 200 ADs when Tertullian, the early church father, wrote, You are the light of the world, a tree evergreen if you have renounced the heathen temple. Later in 716, Saint Boniface was called to be a missionary in Germany where the chieftain Gundar was about to offer the little prince Ajolf as a bloody sacrifice to Thor. This is the pagan god that they had who supposedly live in the huge donar oak tree at Geismar. Saint Boniface boldly took an axe and took some swings at the mighty blood oak and the tree was blown over by the wind. That day, a lot of people present converted to Christianity. I'll read an excerpt from what Saint Boniface said about the tree. It is the wood of peace, for your houses are built of fir. It is the sign of endless life, for its branches are evergreen. See how it points toward the heaven. Let this be called the tree of the Christ child. And so that's another background of the Christmas tree. Now, lights on the Christmas trees are attributed to Martin Luther. 
1520, Martin Luther was walking outside on Christmas Eve. Then he noticed so many stars illuminating the sky. When he got back home, he surprised his family with a Christmas tree and placed some small candles on the branches, symbolizing baby Jesus as the light of the world whose birth was so awesome that it brightened the sky on the first Christmas Eve. Of course, now we use electric lights for practical and safety reasons. Another interesting thing that I learned were some biblical themes related to the legends and traditions of Saint Nicholas. So let's go back to Jesus first. One thing we know is that Jesus is coming back. Let's check that out in Revelation 19, 11 to 16. Now I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We also know that the saints would return with him. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. The saints and angels would also be riding white horses. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Awesome stuff, right? Well, these verses have become part of the legend of Saint Nicholas. <laughs> He comes back once a year like a mini judgment day, checking if the children were good or bad. And then the Scandinavian countries transitioned to having St. Nicholas on reindeer since they were more available in those countries rather than horses. Matthew 16, 27 says this, for the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. So the legend here would be that the angels were like elves, helping Santa with the gifts and judging the kids who were naughty or nice. So how did St. Nicholas become Santa Claus? So St. Nicholas comes from the Dutch name Saint Niklaas to Sinterklaas to Santa Claus. It was Thomas Nast who first illustrated Santa in black and white. Then the McLaughlin brothers started drawing him in the red suit with white fur trim. Then in the 1930s, Santa as we know now was designed by Haddon Sundblom under a contract with Coca-Cola. These are just some of the things that I've learned from reading this book some time ago. You can check it out if you want. If you found any of this information interesting, let me know in the comments below. Okay, I'm gonna be a little bit honest right now. In Western society, we know that it's pretty evident that Christmas is becoming more and more secularized. That's one of the reasons why I would say that I didn't like Christmas as much before. Again, though, after reading this book, it's changed my mind. I have three major realizations. Here's my first one. Give with the heart to give, not because you have to. During Christmas, lots of times we get so stressed about Christmas shopping and who to give to or what to give. Sometimes we give to someone because we know they're gonna give something to us and we would feel guilty if we don't. Sometimes you don't wanna give because it's so much money too. There are a lot of scenarios, but why don't we think of giving a gift as a way to serve God? Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Throughout the year, God has given you blessings. Consider giving gifts as worship to God, serving another person, 
And again, gifts don't have to be material. It can be giving love, showing care to someone, or if you really want to give something material, it can be something that is DIY as a token of appreciation. We can go back to the story of Saint Nicholas. During that time, he was just Nicholas, and he didn't want for the news of him dropping bags of gold into the father's house to spread because he wanted the glory to be to God. May we have the same attitude. The next one is this, know that Jesus is the OG. So we talked about a lot of legends about Christmas traditions, and as the author of this book said, some may be true, but some may just be parts of the legend of St. Nicholas. Christmas might have been made to counter the pagan events of worship, but between celebrating the birth of Jesus and that, I think Jesus' birth is more known now. And in that, Jesus wins. Jesus came before all of these traditions. John 1 verses 1 to 3 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Jesus has always existed with God from the beginning of time. We don't have to be bound by what the world thinks. We're free from that. May the birth of Jesus as a child be our heart behind why we celebrate Christmas. Everything else is secondary. My next realization is this. As long as believers are on earth, we should spread the real reason for the season. One of the things I love about Christmas is that we can hear songs about Jesus all over. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to God, glory in the highest. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. These songs are opening conversations about Jesus if we get to talk to people that are around Christmas shopping with us. Generally, people are in a lighter mood to be kind, and hopefully they would be open to listening to what we believers have to say about Christmas and what it means to us. As Ephesians 5.16 says, make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. I'm convicted by this myself. I just watched a video on social media where a popular guy was ranting over people not mingling with each other anymore when they're at stores. One thing is that a lot of people are shopping online now, but also also, it's in the culture now. A lot of people are glued to their phones, or if they are out, they have AirPods in their ears. And it already closes the possibilities of talking to someone in person. Let's make every opportunity to model Christ in our lives, and hopefully let people see the God in us. Maybe invite them to a Christmas event at church. I have one in this video over here. With that, let me say Merry Christmas and Happy Holy Days. Click like if you were blessed, subscribe and hit the bell if you like content like this. And remember, our hope and future is in Jesus. See you in the next video.